You are watching part one of a five-part series called Jack Binion, Keeping Memory Alive. My name is Jesse Fullen. I'm the community manager at Poker News. I'm so excited to share with you this amazing interview. I got to go over to Jack Binion's office, sit with him for almost two hours, and just listen to him tell stories about his favorite memories, his favorite experiences in poker, some great stories about different poker players from different eras of time. I am so uh, excited to share this with you guys. So sit back and enjoy part one of our five part series, Jack Binion, Keeping Memory Alive. Jack Binion, thank you. You're it's welcome, an, I'm an, looking forward to this. It's an honor to interview you, sir. It's an honor. I love poker. I'm a very big well, fan. Well, thank you, that's flat, very flattering of you to say. So I, uh, I know that we wouldn't have what we have today without you and what you've done, so thank you. Um, the first thing I want to talk about, Jack, is the Keep Memory Alive event. Well, I tell you what, the Keep Memory Alive event, uh, Larry Rubo asked me to host this tournament. And he, he's been a, a good friend of mine and, and such a good guy and done me so many favors and been great for the town. Just great for the town. I mean, we have the, you know, the Rubo Center, which is a, uh, an area that's probably maybe the best uh, uh, brain health clinic in the country uh, connected with Cleveland Clinic. So it's just really uh, lucky to have it. And he's done a lot of work on it and it's been very successful. My understanding is that you started doing a charity event to help their fundraising efforts in 2018. I don't know just when it was. Has it been that long? I think so. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. So he asked me to do it naturally uh, I had to, I didn't even have to, uh, 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 I didn't even have an option to say, no, I have to do whatever he asks. For our audience who may not have been there, you won this event. I know, it was the craziest thing ever. Yeah? And, and I also heard uh, that you didn't win the last event, but you came in second place. No, my wife did, and oh, she okay. can't play a lick. Yeah. <laughs> she did, we, we had to tell her, she didn't know... Uh, the uh, sequence, the worth of hands, and she came in second. Wow. Well, I tell you what it is. All these tournaments like this, for the most part, they, they want them to last, you know, three hours or something. Right. And about the first hour, they kind of let everybody play. And then after that, you're just playing a short stack, yep. and whoever gets a rush at the end wins the tournament. Do you, do you find yourself playing poker very often? No. I haven't played poker in... 25 years. That, that's the first time, the only time I play poker once a year is at this event. Now, besides this event you just won, have you ever won a poker tournament before? No, no. No. Okay. No, I haven't even, I had, not only haven't won one, I, I haven't even shown very good at them. And everyone, and I know I can't play. Uh, I'm really not a top poker player, but uh, 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 especially tournament play, so. Anyway. Yes, sir. Well, congratulations on winning the Keep Memory Alive event. Right. And today, Jack, as we have this interview, my goal is to not only show love to Keep Memory Alive and the Cleveland Clinic, right. but also I want to talk about your memories and how we can keep your, your memories of the WSOP and the horseshoe alive as well. And here's some yes. of your stories. So, okay, sure. So thank you, sir. I appreciate your time. Um, now, let's go back. Your family left Texas in 1947. Actually, uh, uh, my dad came out. Okay, uh, let's face it. There yeah. was a, there was many illegal gambling casinos in America at this time, and it was right after the war, and people could now travel again. And uh, I don't know if you remember what the Keefe Offer Committee was, and. Uh, and, and th there was a movement throughout the country to close illegal gambling down. And in, 19, in the, uh, the fall of 46, a reformed administration came into Dallas and they shut the town down. And when I said they shut the town down, it was always illegal, mm -hmm. but it was tolerated. Right. Now after this, it will not be tolerated. And that's when we moved to Vegas. And I came out here in 47 at the semester break. Okay. Yeah, so you were, gosh, 
when the yeah. horseshoe opened, I was you were, ten years old. Right, it's crazy. Yeah, that's uh, and I, I was gonna say when the horseshoe opened officially on August fourteenth in nineteen fifty one, you must have been about fifteen, maybe fourteen. Fourteen, fourteen, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, what were your memories of those early years when you first came? Or were you happy as a child? Oh, you... yeah, yeah. I, well, I always had a great childhood. Yeah. My father and my mother, I can't think of two people that were more devoted to than your children than my parents were. Yeah. And my dad was very permissive in a way. But uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, I had a great childhood. And uh, he opened it in 51. Before that, we would always go to the, he owned a ranch in Montana, and all summer we'd spend all of our time at the ranch. That summer we stayed there, and I got a job and a bunch of stuff. Then uh, he opened the horseshoe. So, uh, and, and he was very successful with it. And unfortunately, they indicted him for income tax evasion and gambling back in Texas and they finally got him back there and they put him in jail and he had to sell the horseshoe. Right. And he sold it to Joe W. Brown who was a gambler from uh, New Orleans that had a place for many years in uh, St. Bernard Parish which is just uh, 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 actually a suburb of New Orleans. Okay. When he sold it to Joe Brown was there a plan to get it back, or was it? Yeah, uh, there was a plan to to get part of it back. Okay. Now it was just a, 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 a there was no written uh, things to it. Yeah. And Joe Brown actually he didn't know Joe Brown that well, but Joe Brown was a good guy, and his uh, reputation uh, was well deserved. Good. And he was very rich. Yeah. What had happened? <laughs> he was a very successful gambler. But then he invested in oil, and he hit a huge gas field down in uh, uh, Louisiana. And after he died, they sold the gas field for uh, $47.5 million, which at this time would be <laughs> at least $470 million, probably more. Right. Uh, probably double that. In fact, there's a good chance that if they had the Ford 400 in those days, Joe Brown would have been on it. When your father got the horseshoe back, were you already? Well, he never, here's what happened. Okay. He sold it to Joe Brown, and then Joe Brown got sick, and he sold it to the the, uh, the Fremont, the people that owned the Fremont, which okay. was a group of uh, guys. And uh, then they got in trouble with the government, <laughs> and they came to us, uh, and they came to me, and they said, you want to buy it? And we said, yes. And I already owned some, uh, I, I, when we, when the, uh, the Fremont took over, I owned two and a half percent, and in the meantime, I'd uh, got it back to where I'd had 25 percent. Okay. And uh, then, uh, when we bought it out, we borrowed the money from the bank and a bunch of stuff, uh, we were, uh, we owned 100% of the, 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 the place. I know that when 1970 rolls around, you're the president of the Horseshoe. Yes. Did you have any other title, any other role besides? No, no, that? just president, general manager, what do you want to call it. Uh, I was 27 when we bought the Horseshoe back. Yes, sir. So I was the general manager from that time on. Prior, just prior to 1970, um, I know that you took a trip, I believe with your father, to Reno. Okay, me and my brother and, and my father kind of never traveled much together, but there's a guy from Austin, Texas that owned a casino in, in Reno. And he invited us to a thing called a gambler's convention. Mm -hmm. Well, my dad says, let's go up there. So we did, we all, and he liked to, he loved to travel with me and my uh, brother or, or one of us, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, it was just a poker game. Yeah. And that's where I met Doyle. Right, which is amazing. I, huh? That's amazing. That's, that's, that's yeah, that's where I met Doyle. And, and so it was just, so I said, well, that's pretty interesting. Now, the next year, we remodeled the horseshoe and expanded it. Okay. So now it's going to open a, a card room. Yes, sir. And so we said, okay, uh, this is not a bad idea. I might uh, call up. And I called those guys up and I said, you guys going to do that? convention again and they says no I said but well, you know why if we do it he said no 
And that's how it took off. That's how it started, right. And before that, I've also heard the, the, the tales about Nick the Greek and Johnny Moss. That was, that was before. Okay. That was a, 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 a long time, a before. Long time before. And, and really, people don't really understand. They think it was in the horseshoe. But most of that was just a private game, at, mostly at the Flamingo. Flamingo, that's what I heard, right. Yeah. Uh, but, the, but the myth, the legend, I mean, you know, legends oh, I, can... well, All these things are always uh, 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 more to it and everything. But yeah, they, they, John and, and, and uh, Nick the Greek played uh, uh, a lot. In fact, uh, Nick the Greek would never let anybody take, take his picture. And him and my father were good friends. And he came out to the house, and we got a picture of him and all five of us kids together with us. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Now, now today, nobody knows who Nick the Greek was, but Nick the Greek was the only known gambler in America at that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has... I've he had I've, a recognizable name. I've, I've, I've done some research on Nick the Greek, on Titanic Thompson, yes. on, on these legendary gamblers, and even Johnny Moss. He was... He was the old man of poker, right? Yes. He was, I mean, they, so, you know, we think about Doyle as today's old man of poker, basically. Yes. But back when it started, there were already... Yes, yeah, okay. Well, like always, uh, actually, Ty couldn't... He wasn't a good player. He was just... Okay, he was a super cheater. He was the first super cheater there was. <laughs> now, when I say that, him... And Joe Bernstein, which I think we got some pictures of. Have you ever seen Joe Bernstein? I believe so. And I believe so. Nathan Lynette. Uh, uh, it shows how. Uh, anyway, Nathan Lynette, and they played uh, 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 Rothstein, and that's that's they were there when he when he. Uh, that's how he got killed uh, uh, over this poker game. Thank you.